Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 5, Lesson 1, 2D Arrays, Exercise Number 3. We have a Choose Your Own Adventure. A lot of these answers are very similar. I'm going to go ahead and do test scores, because what teacher wouldn't want to do more teacher work? Let's go ahead and jump in and see what we have to do. A teacher wants to store the test scores for several students. They have the following values. We have some values right here. Each row represents a unique student, and each column represents a math score, a reading score, and a writing score, respectively. We're going to create the data array method to store this data. We're going to declare and initialize a 2D array called tempData using the new keyword. And then in that array, we're going to return temp data. And then we're going to write the set data values method and assign the values for each row and column in the scores array. And if we get lost, we have a little show me how. Let's take a look at our code. We're instantiating a new object, Miss Cook. She is a new teacher. And that object is calling the set data values method. Let's go into teacher.java. We have one 2D array called scores. We have one object, and that is getting the scores of that array. We have one get method, a create data array, and this is where we're going to initialize our 2D array. We have set data values, and we have to write a method to assign values for each row and column. What we're doing is creating an empty array, and then we're filling it with each of these scores. First, let's go ahead and initialize this empty array. If you remember back, this is exactly like initializing a 1D array, except we have a new set of square brackets that represent the column. First is the row in a 1D array, second is the column in that array. How do we do that? Well, these are all going to be integers, so it's an int. We need two square brackets. The array has to be called temp data, and that is equal to a new integer array. We need two square brackets. Don't forget your semicolon. How many rows? One, two, three, four, five. How many columns? One, two, three. Now we have to return temp data. So not null. We're going to go temp data. That creates our 2D array. Now we have to assign a lot of values. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going into the scores array. And if you remember, to assign it, we have to tell it which row and which column it's going into. That means we have to specify our array, and the array is scores, two square brackets, equal to whatever the new value is. I am going to copy this because we're going to do this quite a bit. So control C. And now we just have to tell it each value. So this is 0, 0, 0, 0 is going to be equal to 76. Now we want to get 78. That's 0, 1. 0, 1 is now going to be equal to 78. 75, 0, 2. That takes care of our first student. Come down. We're going to do our second student. This is now going to be, instead of zero, we're at one. So we're going to go one, zero. So we still want to get the zero column. That's going to be equal to 88. Give ourselves a little room here. Our next one is now going to be one, one. 
and you guessed it, it is going to be a 95. Next one is going to be that third, so that is one, two. Are you starting to notice a little pattern here? That is going to be 92. Oh, we have a missing square bracket there. Let's do our third student. This time we're at position two. We go to zero, two zero again is 88. We're gonna go to two, one, and they are at 89. Well, then we go to the last position at two, and that is 86. Well, let's do our fourth student here. We're gonna go to three in the array. Let's start off at zero again. This time we are at 73. Still at three, this time we're at one, and we're gonna be at 74. Three, two is going to be 72. And our last student is going to be four, zero. They are at 97. Four, one is going to be 87. And then four, two is going to be 82. Clean up our code. When I hit run, I should get my set data values method to run. Let's go ahead and hit run, see if we have any spelling errors. We don't. This is a little above and beyond this project, but we can actually print off this data to verify that this array was created. We can do that by modifying the get method in teacher.java. We have our get scores method and we can modify it like we learned in exercise one. So let's get rid of the array. Let's give it two parameters, int row, int column. And then down here, we will return that row and column. Now we have to go create an object to store it and print it off. Let's go to my console. We'll say current grade is equal to our ms cook object get scores method and we want to go let's get an easy one that's 76 we'll go zero comma zero and then let's print off that current grade when i hit run i should get 76 so let's see if we're right Oh, looks like we forgot to give our variable a data type. Let's clear, hit run. And we got our 76. If we want to get 78, we can go 0, 1. Hit run. 78. Key takeaways from this lesson is how do we create and initialize an empty array? And we do that the same way we do with a 1D array, except we're adding another square bracket that's going to handle the columns. 1D array is rows, 2D array is a row and column. We also learned how to put information into our array 
And we did that by setting the array information at the row and column to whatever we wanted to. We also modified our git method in this exercise so we can actually check to make sure we did it right. Hopefully this video helped you understand 2D arrays a little better. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.